Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Not to Talk About podcast, episode eight now. Obviously, joined by Tom again to reflect on what has been another defeat. Well, not 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 too much of a you know a down on the defeat. To be fair, we played we played quite quite well. But obviously, Tom, first of all, how are you? Yeah, mate, I'm I'm good. I'm glad to be back. You know, I'm, uh, one of my favourite parts of the week. This recording recording this, it's always uh, always great to talk talk knots, isn't it? So uh, yeah, how about you? How how are you feeling? Yeah, good mate. Good. I definitely can't complain. Pretty much in the same boat as you. So, let's just dive straight into it. So, obviously, defeat at Wrexham again. Like I just mentioned, there not not the worst uh, display by any means. Uh, your immediate thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I think that it was a good performance, um, especially the first half. I thought we were really on top, and that that's kind of like crazy to not crazy to say, but obviously their goal came in the first half, so it's like. It's weird that I think that second half they probably had um, definitely the start of the second half they had a better spell than us, um, but they didn't really make too much of it. We didn't make too much of the first half either. Um, I think on another day, like it goes another way. I just feel like I said that I feel like they're our bogey side, and people said, "Oh, we've we've, we've won one of the last four against them." But what by that what I mean is like no matter how well we play, it just feels like they're always going to get that sort of they're going to get the goal or you know a moment will fall their way um, and that's not me complaining I'm, you know it just feels a bit like they're a little bit inevitable when we play them um, and so even when watching it was like you just feel you feel uncomfortable when you play them you can never ever like relax like we were on top first half but you did feel that the goal was up like any time they got the ball you felt like threatened by them because that's kind of how they play and they do really well against us, so I think it's a good performance. I know we're going to get onto the the details and you know that early chance. Um, I guess I'll ask you about that early chance because for me, and the early chance I'm talking about is obviously the Langstaff uh, header. I, obviously, I think he should he should score, but I do think watching it back, it is a lot tougher than it first looked. Like just because of how close he is to the goal. Like it's probably more difficult to angle his header than it would be if he's a couple of yards back. But what was your thought? Because obviously that would have been the perfect start, wouldn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. And look, like if that goes in at one 0 in the first two minutes, is a different game completely. You know, we've gone. It wouldn't have been nil nil obviously for so long. And if you want any chance like that to fall to anyone on the team, it's Macker. You know, nine times out of ten, he's going to score that. He scored. It arguably too difficult, two more difficult headers in, at Newport in, in the week. I get obviously the angle in that, but from from point blank range, someone like Marcus should be scoring. It's as simple as that for me. Uh, I think he don't need anyone to tell him that as well. It's probably something he knows. I don't think he'll be obviously blaming himself, but end of the day, like that's in a big game like that, you know, that's that against a crowd that's clearly on your back because that's just the kind of fan base they are. You know, to to silence them in the first two minutes would have been a massive help, and that's not me saying oh we would have gone on and won the game, but at least at that point you know you're you're, you're at one nil and you look a lot better. Than, you look a lot better off than obviously what we were because like tw- I think it was twenty minutes later we find ourselves one nil down. So at that point straight away you're already ruling your missed chance, and especially a chance like that so early on against well not against sorry fall into a player if you like if the the caliber of Maka who you expect to score them sort of chances obviously is a massive part of the game but you can't there's obviously no blaming him I think we, we created a lot a lot to be fair you know there's there's many plenty of Jolie Jones balls into the box that were almost begging for someone to meet and we didn't to be fair a lot of them were met by direct and defenders who turned it towards their own goal and they obviously they they still to me class as chances because at the end of the day, from from the angle of the away and they didn't look like they missed by much. And then obviously you had the dizzy one, which to be fair to Rex and goalkeeper made a good save. But you definitely aren't wrong when you said we had a rib of the green in the first half. But then again, arguably against the run of play, you know they they have a they have a five minute spell if you like of, of where they're just you know attacking on us and they, and they score. Obviously Stephen Fletcher, you know someone you'd expect to score them sort of chances would be experienced he has. But what did you make of the goal? Because I think for me, it was it was definitely five minutes that we struggled to clear our lines and we've seen that a lot this season. And obviously in the end, we got punished. So just depending for your thoughts on that. Yeah, I think that just to, to, to wrap up on, on the Macca chance quickly, that, so that would have been the perfect start 
for the system as well because it was the perfect um, demonstration of what that change of formation is all about. You know, Maka was in space um, as a winger against a team with wing backs. Um, you find a lot more space because the wing back can't really mark you because if he marks you, then he's no longer a wing back, is he? He's, he's pinned back. So he found that pocket of space for that early chance, and that would have just been like so sweet to get that goal. It would have been like the 4 2 3 1 working absolutely perfectly, and like that would have been amazing. But I think you've summed it up well. Like the Cronco made a really good save from, from Didzi. Um, but the Fletcher chance, I mean, he's a great finish to be fair on his weaker foot as well. Um, and that is kind of like Stephen Fletcher. I thought he was really good all game. I thought he just looks, you could tell he's played at the level he's played at. Like his, his cushion of his head are down. It just looked, everything he did just, he just carried himself with class, didn't he? Um, and, and everything, every action he performed, you know, he, he just, he looks like a, a cut above really. Um, and yeah, like, it's, a, it's a great finish. It's disappointing we didn't block the cross. I, I, I actually praised Cammy because I think that he's going to get better and better at it. But, you know, he's playing that opposition at left back. But he actually blocked quite a few crosses. And it's just unfortunate that the one that came to the box kind of... I think we did get a little bit unlucky because we kind of dealt with the first ball. It kind of falls then at a nice angle for Fletcher. Still has a lot to do. Still a great finish. Don't take anything away from him. But it does fall for him. And I think we get a little bit unfortunate there with that chance. Um, but, you know, that's kind of where they they do their best work, Wrexham. And I think that's why after the game, um, we'll get onto that, of course, the, the reaction. And it was quite divisive. And I think I'd, you know, I'd put a tweet out saying they did, they did their bits well. And I think a lot of Knott's fans thought I was saying that they were the better team. I, I wasn't saying that. But what I was praising them for, because you have to give it a team credit, because it's not like we've absolutely battered them and we've got so unlucky you know they did do their bits well and down that right hand side they got plenty of crosses in like you say that five minute period they were dominant and I feel like that's with Wrexham that's what it all it takes and that's why I hate hate playing them because other teams of course any game of football you have periods where one team has the ball has a bit of spell of dominance than another team but when you when it's Wrexham it always feels like when they've got that spell of dominance they're going to do something with it um, and they did ultimately, um, and that's how they went one it up. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm glad you touched on Cameron there because for me as well, like obviously the past week we've had two games against two good teams in the division. He's played out of position. I don't think he's had a bad game in any of them, to be honest. So obviously as well, I know he's had experience playing as like a, a winger at Torquay, and then obviously in sort of the left hand positions. But it's definitely new for him here. And obviously, if if we move forward as a as, as a team that like reverts to a forward or back, maybe it was something he will see often. So, I guess what my question is for you now is, do you reckon that's something that he could hold down for the next season? Or do you reckon we'll look towards maybe bringing, say, a new left-back, new right-back, if it's something that we'll stick to? I think we'll definitely bring a right-back in, just because... Well, actually, I say that, it's difficult, because obviously the the, the issue at the minute is, I would assume, I don't know, but I would assume that Brindley and... And, and Toby are both injured because they've not been in the squad. We've not heard anything really, have we? I don't think, or maybe I've missed it, but they've not been in the squad. And you would you would have expected them to be the player that would play right back because they've both played right back in their career. Um, in terms of left back, I thought Chickson actually looked really bright when he came on in the second half. He looked quite lively, and he, him coming back will be will be a big will be big for us because he, he was a, a a key player for us last season. I think people, you know, it's it's quickly forgotten that how how important he was under Luke Williams' side last last year. Uh, and I think he can push Cammy for that spot, t- starting spot. Um, I, I do think that maybe long-term in the summer, yeah, we might look at, if we stick with the back four, we might look at um, a, a left-back. But then again, I wouldn't rule out us using the back four for the rest of the season. But then going back to the five in the summer once we've had a chance to, to rebuild because the, the management team that have come in played a back five at Wheelstone. And so I, I'm not sure whether the back four has been done kind of as a, I don't want to say temporary measure because, you know, we've still got 14 games left and I think that's how we'll, we'll probably play for most of them. But I don't know if it's a, a case of they had to change to a four because we were conceding so many. Um, and so it's a difficult question to, to answer, definitely. But for me, he's looked... Um, 
he's looked good in the two games. I think he can go into that role. Um, and I think for the rest of the season, he's, he's going to be first choice in that position for sure. 100% agree, as always. Like, I just, I, I can't, I can't pick a fault in any of his performances so far at, at left back. Obviously, again, like obviously the the crossing for the Wrexham goal came from left hand side, but like you said, the, the amount of the amount of crosses that he's blocked or prevented in that game, you know, one his bounce going, and unfortunately, the one that did end up in the box was the one that ended up in the back of the net. There's obviously that's the left hand side. Now we talk about the right hand side, and I want to talk to you again about Aaron Amane because for me. If I'm going to be completely honest, he's becoming a frustrating watch progressively more and more. I just, I, I, I'm not sure if it's something that he's being asked to do by not, by not being, you know, the more, the more like threatening side of the pitch, you know. But like, we know what he's capable of. You know, he's probably one of the fastest, if not the fastest player in the league. You know, he's got the capability to beat a man. And there was just times on Saturday where he just wasn't doing it. You know, just very like passive, very. Very just not like I wouldn't say didn't look interested more just like just always wanted the easy option of turning and passing it back and then that I think that's sort of why it definitely benefited McLean more against Jody because you kind of knew what Jody was going to do straight away because of Aaron's lack of I wouldn't say lack of movement but it was just at times he was just very static and then this is something I want to talk to you about because in my, when when we talk about buying new players. For me, currently, with two years left on his deal, a year after the season, if it, if you ask me right now, I'll definitely be listening to offers for him in the summer. And if you can get one that you think is, uh, is suitable, then I'd be personally saying thank you for thank you for the memories. But you know, it's time to move on. But that's the thing; it's not bad to say on a podcast because football moves on. You know, these copper players now, two years time, you will probably only be looking at two or three that's still here because that's the kind of that's the kind of club knocks are. So obviously, I just want to get your thoughts on Aaron because it's not just me who started to think it as well. I think it's a, it is a number of the fan base, and so there was a lot of frustration within the way end of his of his performance on Saturday. So obviously, again, a penny for your thoughts on that. Yeah, I think patience is running out with 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 Aaron definitely. Um, it's a weird one for me because um, he was a player that I kind of was highlighting uh, probably a couple of months ago as a player that I was frustrated with. And I've kind of gone the opposite way to the fan base. Like I think the fan base were here a couple of months ago, and I was kind of like, maybe down here is a bit harsh, but I was, you know, I was questioning. Is this, this is when still Williams was still the manager. You know, um, you had Jody, you've got Dan Crowley, Didzi, and Macca all on double figures for for goal contributions, and he was on like two or three for a while. Um, then he kind of had that run of goals, and I was thinking, okay, and so I think it's kind of gone like the fan base was here and I was here and it's kind of going the opposite way in terms of, I, I, I completely hear what you're saying and he is, he is frustrating at times, but I think obviously Saturday is a hard game for him. Um, he's playing right back in a four, which is, you know, he's never his position. I don't really think, um, yeah, of course I'm a little bit disappointed. I thought that that right side would have a little bit more of an effect against McLean. Um, in terms of like the double up, we didn't really see that. Um, I think it's difficult with him as well because he's he's brilliant running on to the end of a of a um, of a ball, but from a stacked starting position, like he's not like Jody who from a stacked starting position could take a man on. But we saw it. I think there was a moment in the second half that Aaron got on the ball. And he took on to a three, like he had a really good run. And when he gets going, he's really hard to stop. He just doesn't get going enough. And I think there's a combination of things there. I think one, it's confidence with him. And I think too, I think it is harder than it probably looks. He because he's got so much pace, you kind of almost. And I think you know, I'm guilty of this as well. You almost expect him to take a man on, but it, it is difficult, and it's very, um, you know, explosive actions which are tiring for him. Um, I think that ha him having a, a drop to the bench really benefited him against Newport. And for me, he's a player that if we do use that back four, and I think when Lewis McCarry gets his fitness up massively, he's going to be first choice at right back. I mean, there's no doubt there. Aaron, you might start seeing a little bit better of him because he's going to be coming in from the bench. It, probably in the winger positions. Against tired legs, he should have more of an impact there. So I think it's one where I 100% understand the frustration and people are running out of patience with him. Um, but he's another one where I think maybe he, he needs, like for as much of himself, a little bit like we said with Aiden Stone, he kind of needs a little bit taken out of the team for his own benefit. You know, um, I think that maybe him dropping to the bench 
and becoming an impact sub for the next few games, we might start to see a little bit more from Aaron uh, in that role. So I wouldn't write him off completely yet, but I do completely get the frustration and, and where it's coming from for sure. Hundred percent. And look, because I'm not saying I'm writing him off. I just think, from what you know, you, what from what we know that he's capable of, and what we're seeing on the pitch right now, it's understandable. Like, there's so much frustration. And look, obviously the big talking points were uh, some of the decisions from the referee at the weekend. And before we talk about this, there's obviously something I'd like to address as well. Um, so obviously we're going to speak about this right now. And I've, there was a—I don't think you would have seen it, but I saw it because it was quite late on a Saturday night. But there was a certain uh, podcast from the Wrexham side that thought it'd be a good idea to screen record a certain podcast from the Not side, and then try and tweet it out in a manner where they were they said something along the lines of, um, "Oh, I've got all the time in the world, all the time in the world for the podcast." Um, uh, but such and such, like, take it with a pinch of salt or something. And then they, they tweeted a clip where it was kind of like, I don't want to, I'm not, look, you, you probably have an idea who, who, who I'm referring to here. They know because I've spoke to them about it. They're not side. So they tweeted, they tweeted a clip of, um, so the Wrexham side, they tweeted a clip of the, the, the Knots podcast of, of a clip that he was being honest in the clip, but it was in a way where, you know, what the Wrexham podcast was looking at doing was obviously trying to, like, draw it out a little bit and obviously have a pile up of comments. And one thing I'd like to say is if you, if they are watching this podcast for Wrexham side, trying to screen record some of it for, uh, for a few clicks on Twitter, be my guest. But at the end of the day, do not do not tweet things like, oh, I've got all the time in the world for your podcast and then try and have a pile up of shit comments. Sorry for the language, producer Char. That's just the truth. Don't, don't contradict yourself because at the end of the day, if the roles were reversed, you wouldn't like comments like that on your podcast. That's what I want to say on that. So let's get into the referee decisions, Tom. Uh, obviously, the first one I want to talk to you about was the the Elliot Lee one. You've seen the photos of him grabbing Robertson around the neck. Look, I'm, I'm not saying it was red. It it, it was very, it, it weren't anything in the malicious in in the malicious sense of like strangling. But last time I checked, putting your hands around the throat of an opposition player, you know, you've got to ask the question. So I want to get your thoughts on that. Yeah, I, I mean, I know both players got booked. Um, and I don't know. You can't see from one photo if there's something leading up to it. And I haven't, I haven't, I'll be honest, I haven't seen it back. So I don't know if there's an altercation leading up to it. Um, so I have to put that in there that, you know, both players got booked. But I can't say categorically that Robertson didn't deserve a booking because there might be a build-up to that. But based off based off the photo, it's, it's bizarre to see that both players um, got booked. For sure, um, look, it's not it's not um, nice to see. But what I do, what I do want to raise there is in terms of Robertson is that I think it's brilliant that we've got a player. That's, uh, I saw someone say he's got a bit of fire in his belly, and I like that. I think he, I think they're right. He's got a little bit of that needle that we've perhaps missed. We're a very nice football team, and even though we've had a lot of yellow cards, and 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 it's never really been because we've been, you know making cynical fouls and stuff um and i just think he's got that little bit of needle about him and i and i, and I do like that um but yeah the yeah uh, i mean from the photo it doesn't look great but like you say like photos can be taken um i guess like the clip uh, you're right i didn't i've not seen the clip but i guess things can be taken out of context so it's difficult to base it on on the photo but yeah i have seen the photo and it, it doesn't look amazing to be fair no it doesn't and I, I'm pretty sure if obviously roles are reversed in that situation, obviously the different fan bases will be asking for different things, and that's just football, I guess, at the end of the day. Uh, but I like your points about Robertson. I think what you're starting to see now is that nitty-gritty midfielder that we have been missing. I thought Saturday he broke up the play very well. You know, in in in, in a midfield with with obviously Bostock again against oh, probably one of the best midfields in the league, you know, Elliot Lee, Cannon, players like that. You know, they're no pushovers, but I thought Robertson held his own. Uh, so yeah, hundred percent agree. I think he's been a brilliant signing, f- f- first and foremost. I know if obviously Fleetwood fans again weren't weren't biggest fans, but if he's going to play like that for us every week, I'm sure we're going to be bigger fans of him than they were. So yeah, perfect business for us. And then obviously the the massive talking point of the game, I think, was obviously the disallowed goal. Look, I'm under no illusion, right? That if this if this goal was scored by the other team, you know, they'd probably have a bit more bit more luck than what we had. 
you know, I, I can't see a world where that gets disliked for the other team personally. That's just me being honest. But again, you know, it's another thing that caused a massive debate online. For me personally, I still stand straight by what I said. I, I don't think in a world where it's where it's been handled that clear and obvious. You know, they took that's the that's the massive phrase in this day and age. You know, clear and obvious. At what point is a man where the ball? You know, I'm looking at my shoulder now because that that's pretty much where it hit. You know, it was the shoulder area. Yes, okay. The arm was moved towards the ball, but it didn't hit. It didn't hit an area of the arm where you can look at it and think, okay, that was that was a clear attempt to to handle the ball. No, absolutely not. Last time I checked, if you shoulder a ball into the back of the net, that counts. And in my opinion, it hit the shoulder. And even then, on the replay, like it it, it showed a part where it hit his uh, chest, etc., or torso, whatever you want to call it. And look, I just think it was harsh. I think obviously Stuart, Stuart Maynard came out at the end and said it says a lot when the opposition players don't contest it. Obviously the referee, you know, for whatever reason disallows it. And again, I don't agree with it. I think that was, but again, you know, you can't look at that and say, oh, it was the referee's fault. We had we had chances to score again. Robertson had a chance himself in the second half, and obviously it was another good save. But if you look at that where you've had the ball in the back of the net, and yeah, okay. It was disallowed, but I think it was wrongfully so. And I'm pretty sure you will agree with me there. Yeah, well, f- firstly, the tweet I put out, um, I-, I want to clarify something, and, and uh, it might sound like I'm sitting on the fence a little bit, but I initially, the, the reason I put the tweet out, and I said, I think the word I said was, you know it's not your day when this is given against you or something. What I meant by that was uh, kind of what you were allu- alluded to was like, you just like nothing like Maka missed the chance early on another day he scores that uh, we get a goal ruled out for handball a borderline decision on another day it goes for you and another day it goes against you and what I kind of meant by that was like it's a borderline decision and on a on this day like the the, the, mo- the fine mo- moments of fine margins have gone against us um, but people started responding to it um, in terms of like I'd said oh it's never handball and uh, to be honest with you I could not be bothered to to like retweet it and explain that I was kind of saying that it just feels like it wasn't our day because that would have taken far too much to explain on on a tweet. You got limited characters, and I thought, you know what, it is what it is. Let people have their assumption of what what I've said. Because to be fair, from that video, it wasn't conclusive. From the the screenshots, it's still not one hundred percent conclusive. And uh, I'm not going to sit here and moan about a moment that's gone against because we still had another half an hour whatever to score an equaliser or, and stuff like that but it does feel a little bit disappointing that you know um, that in those games it just and, and it, it, that's what I mean it just felt like this wasn't going to be our day we played so well first half and to go in half 1-0 down half time it's like this is not going to be our day um, in terms of the handball I think you've made the perfect point there about the appealing I think if the referee doesn't give it none of them complain no one complains if that ball's in the back of the net and um, referee says yeah goal was there any appeals um, not that I was aware of um, and that's it. that's that probably speaks volumes uh, by the letter of the law it probably isn't a goal I think so people have been saying that if it touches any part of your arm and ends up in the back of the net it's not a goal um, and that you can question the laws and you know that the law is the law Um and that is that so we we can't sit and complain about it too much um but what we can say is obviously that it's a little bit disappointing that it didn't go our way um felt like on another day it could have done um and it was borderline and i think that in those moments it, it, it sometimes goes for you and sometimes it goes against you but on on the moments you know um to be fair we rode our luck as well and that's kind of what i want to bring up before we move on was that when we say that uh, Wrexham have done well, you know, I think that it's from both sides. Wrexham think they massively deserve to win and not fans I think we massively deserve to win. I think it's somewhere in the middle because, you know, they did have a period where they were on top. They hit the post two or three times, didn't they? I think at the start of the the second half. So I think a draw would have been fair and had that goal gone in, it probably would have ended a draw. So um, it's a close game and, yeah, it's defined by that moment. But the performance is still strong, and and I think that we can take positives from it. And I, look, hopefully our season isn't defined by that moment. If we miss out on the playoffs by two points, then you know we might look back at that and think, or oh, by a point, sorry, you know, 
look back at that and think, wow, that could have been a difference maker. But hopefully we can take the positives that we got from that game into into Saturday because uh, we played really well, I thought, for the most part. No, 100%. And before we go on to Saturday, look, there's one more point I'd like to raise about, obviously, the, the, the decisions. Like, look, at the end of the day, I, I can't understand a world where that referee has seen that, that movement like in that sort of passage of play where he's seen the clip, like he's he's looked at it and saw it in the moment as, oh, that's a clear handball. Like this got to be disallowed. Like, I'm not saying it's a guest job by any stretch, by any stretch of the imagination. I'm just saying, look, I don't think, I don't think there's a point where you can even even in even as as look, like, the game was the game on Saturday was brilliant, you know, fast pace the whole way through. To to rule that goal out the way he did you have to be confident about the the choice you've made and I, I don't think I, I don't, if you ask him honestly the referee I don't think he would have been I don't think it was a I don't think it was something he was 100% sure of I just think he, it, it was kind of an impulse but look you know it, look, everyone always says in this in this world of football that you know they even themselves out these uh, these decisions but look I can't remember the last time we had one even that for us personally but it is what it is mate it is what it is. Um, obviously, as well, before before we move on to Saturday, I, I put out a tweet after the Mansfield game where I said pretty much it was, look, we'd concede a lot more goals if we didn't have Aidan Baldwin in the side. And again, he was a, a man mounting on Saturday. Absolutely brilliant. Even in the even in, this, in the closing minutes, you know, where it was virtually Baldwin. Baldwin, and I can't remember it's off the top of my head, but someone was back with him. It was pretty much a two at the back, and Baldwin was fantastic in that moment, playing against players like Jack Marriott on fresh legs, and he was still bossing it. And for me, I think that's the man that we have to, when we strip back our problems in the summer, you know, and regroup and bring in these new bodies, especially in the defensive line, because although we are starting to improve, there's there's obvious, it's obvious that, for me, we're going to see a lot of changes in the back line going into next season. I think that's the man you build your defence around. And I obviously want to get your thoughts on that because I stand by that and I stand by the fact that we would concede a lot more goals without him because he's just that kind of player. Yeah, no, he's 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 been brilliant, hasn't he? Since, since the new managers the management team have come in, he's been he's been excellent. He's he he has been. It's been a bit of a revival, I think. Um I think he'll be the first to admit he had a tough start to the season. Um but he's he's Gradually worked his way back into be into becoming a, a key, key man in general, really, um, because you, you build from the back, and he's so so important. And I think, like you say, when, when you look at it in the summer, it, it rebuilds probably the wrong word, but we're, we are rebuilding the squad, I guess. Um, and he's one that you you definitely put as one of the first building blocks in place. You know, he'll be one of the when you look at that, they'll have a chart of the squad. You put his name straight in. Because he's that important, um, I think he's been he's been really really good um, on and off the ball, yeah, and I think that maybe the, the change of management has suited him. If and I know he's had that relationship with Luke Williams, and I don't know it's just guesswork, but you know maybe a change of scene in terms of the management has has has, uh, has helped him out because I know obviously at the start of the season Luke was a bit uh, critical of him, and I think he was you know he's well within his rights to 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 be like that um, but I think that uh, the new management team have come in and, and his levels have, have only got better and better and better and better haven't they so um, long may it continue and yeah I think us fans are all in agreement that Aidan Baldwin when he's when he's on it which at the minute touch wood is more often than not when he's on it he is a superb player yeah absolutely I'm, I'm glad that's the case because obviously we knew what kind of player he was you know Obviously, you don't score two goals as a centre half in a semi final of a of a playoff if you're if you're a bad footballer at the end of the day. So, yeah, long may it continue, mate. And look, speaking of long may it continue, he's got a chance to do it into Saturday. See, that brings us nicely into Saturday, another big game against Crew. But you'd argue, you know, a win in this, and you're looking at a six point week in terms of no disrespect to Sutton, but in the situation that knots are in, and you get that game at home, it's someone you have to turn over and. Again, you have no right to say these sort of things. You know, you have to earn your right to turn teams over. But I think a good win against Crew get the confidence back into the side. Although I don't think it would have dropped too much after the Wrexham performance because it was a good performance. And obviously, the win against Newport had definitely helped that sort of thing. But now, obviously, you look at the Crew game, another good team in the division. But again, 
a game that Notts could do with winning, especially in terms of the league's positions between the two sides. You could argue it's probably a six-pointer. So, again, what do you expect out of this one? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a tough one with Crew because obviously they've they've had a really really good season, um, and I and I feel like maybe we're overlooking them a little bit, and I don't want to say that, but it felt like okay, we've got past Wrexham now, our tough one is over, but actually we're playing. I think Crew are in the top sort of four or five, and um, they've had a consistently really good season. They've been up in that top four or five all season. Um, obviously, it's very controversial game at their place. Um, not my most enjoyable uh, away day I've ever had. I'm not gonna lie, um, and it yeah it was uh, it was what it was. I thought on that day it was a very even game. We well I think we were slightly better. I think we were slightly better value, but I don't think it was like a massive domination uh, job. But I also think that they're a very good team. But I do have a sense of confidence as well and I think that's shared within the fan base it's a little bit like yeah these are a good team but actually if we want to finish in those playoffs and if we keep playing the way we are especially at home like we'll, we'll, we'll back ourselves against anyone um, if we can perform the way we have against Newport and against against Wrexham um, and it's an important game I think we need to get a good performance um, rather than result the result should t- you know hopefully take care of itself and uh, it's about building that momentum now. Um, this really does mark the end of the tricky run. Because like you say, Sutton, I know they beat us at their place, but they are in the bottom two for a reason and they're really struggling. So if we can get through this game on Saturday and play well, I'm not necessarily too concerned about the result because it, it does feel like we'll be within the touch and distance of the playoffs just because of the way that the league is going. Everyone's dropping points left, right and centre. If we can get through with a good performance on Saturday, play the same way again, I think that it's then about building some momentum. So I think play well Saturday and we'll we'll see uh, a continuation and hopefully start of a run. Yeah, absolutely. And look, I'm glad you touched on it there because although we're looking up at the league and obviously being in the playoffs, you've got to look below us as well. And there's not, there's not too much in terms of point differentiation between us and, you know, the likes of 14th and... Obviously, the playoffs were one point outside the playoffs, but I think it's only two points off 13th. You know, that's how close it is. Which obviously, you, and then you look at this game at the weekend against a team that's in and around you, it's definitely a real six point factor. And you said there, obviously, hopefully, you're putting a good performance and the result will take care of itself. I'm, I'm not overly fussed about however however we play, as long as the game finishes with we score more than crew, because ultimately, the win this weekend is massive for me. You know, like I said, the six pointer is cliche in football, but this really is a six pointer. And we went, we played against Crew this season. Obviously, again, we had another decision go against us that day. Um, again, goes back to my point about things leveling themselves up. I don't know when that's going to happen for us, but clearly not anytime soon. But um, yeah, we, look, we was up. We weren't in the best. We weren't in the best form when we played them away, and there weren't too much difference between the two teams. Look, you'd argue it was probably a nil-nil game. And then that happened at the end. But look, if that's anything to go by uh, on Saturday, I know obviously Crew had some good good results previously. Obviously, I think uh, being Stockport away was a, a massive highlight. Um, but look, these are massive games for Notts now. We've made the we've made clear improvements in the last few games, and I think eventually you, you're going to add them all together, and we're going to have to turn somebody over. And if you ask me if it's going to be Crew or Sutton, I'd probably say it was Sutton. But I don't see a world where it can't be both especially with how we played in the past few games. Anything like the Newport performance, I think you'll be looking at a win. Uh, so I kind of you kind of get the idea where my score prediction will probably be going for this one. Um, but yeah, look, it's a massive opportunity to, to claim three points, put out a statement. And then again, you look into it, you get three points here, you're going to Tuesday night against the bottom of the league. You know, obviously they have every right to come and play for play for a win, as every other team does in this league. But I, I'd fully expect not to win that with good with good comfort, especially with that extra bit of fire in the stomach from the opening day defeat, like uh, opening day embarrassment, really. And then obviously you move on to the Bradford game, where obviously you're going to be back by two thousand seven hundred knots. So we have a good chance this week to maximise points, and obviously this could come back to bite me and say it. I, I do, I I can see a world where we do maximise points, but in terms of this game. My score prediction for Saturday is very simple. Not three, crew nil. 
I just think it's going to be one of them games where, you know, you, you feel sort of an injustice to how Saturday went. And I just think the, the amount of defensive improvements that we've made, you know, look, and I said it, I've said it before, I'll say it again, the Mansfield result, OK, we got beat 1-0. It's not a bad result when you look at the team that went there the week after and got turned over 9-2, wrecked him away. You know, you've only conceded once. That's If you... If we went there a few weeks prior, you know, it could have been three or four quite comfortably with the way we were playing. Barrow at home, again, another good team in the division. Chillingham, OK, yes, that's a, that's a bit of a different story, but I'm standing firmly by my 3 0 not, so either I'm going to firm it and look like an idiot if we, if it don't go that way, or I'm going to look like a genius. And to be honest, I don't mind either of them. So, again, I'll throw it right back to you. What are you expecting on Saturday? And can I get your score picture, please? Yeah, um, I I want to start by saying I don't want to sound like we're overlooking crew because you know they've had a really good season and they are consistently strong. But looking at their last five, you know they've got that win over Stockport in there, but Stockport also lost recently to Tranmere, who um, have cut, I think it was four nil loss uh, <laughs> to Tranmere. So they're not the Stockport that we played over Christmas. You know they 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 are uh, in a, in a bit of bit of trouble. And in their last five, they've scored six crew. Um, not conceded many. Uh, I think they've only conceded three. So they've kept three clean sheets in the last five, but two of those clean sheets have been nil nil draws. So I can kind of see where you're coming from in terms of just keeping a clean sheet because um, that is the one thing, and this could really come back to bite me, so I hope it doesn't. But that's the one thing I've looked at crew and thought they're a very, very good team. They've got some brilliant centre backs. Um, one of which has now moved on to Blackburn, I think. Um, you know, they've got they play a really nice style of football, as Cruz sort of always do. Um, but the one question I would have is is the firepower. With that in mind, I think it's gonna be a bit more of a low scoring game. I think there's gonna be three goals as well. I'm gonna go for two one to knots. Um maybe I'm being optimistic, overly optimistic, but like you say, I think there'll be a response. I think if we continue to play the way we do, we'll have success. And um, and yeah, crew. I think if we dominate the ball against them, we, we take away one of their key strengths, which is keeping the ball. So if we can dominate the ball like we did against Wrexham, we'll have a very good chance. So I'm going to go for not two, crew one. And again, look, the perfect way to wrap it up. You've had my prediction, and you've had Tom's. I've gone for three and a little bit more on the optimistic side, but I can see it. And again, I'm. I'll happily turn the camera on when we next record and say I looks a bit of a fool if we get beaten. But like I said previously, I'll never stop being confident in this not side, no matter the room we're on. And especially when I've seen improvements, I feel like I have every right to say it. So, and I hope it's true. So, but look, let's see. This will conclude the uh, eighth episode of the podcast. Again, it sounds cliche, I know, but we generally do appreciate every single supportive comment, subscription, like, share. You know, it all adds up for us. And again, the podcast is starting to fly. Um, and yeah. We're obviously very appreciative. And Tom, is there anything you'd like to add? No, just echo that. You know, uh, following on Spotify and giving us a rating is absolutely brilliant. If you could give us a rating, that'd be amazing. Subscribe on YouTube, obviously, as they always say, it's free to do, and it is, and it does help us out massively, gets the podcast out there more. And obviously, on Twitter, hopefully, we're going to see a bit of a, an increase in uh, an activity on there and get yourselves over on, on to follow us as well. Uh, if you're watching or listening to this, all, all the links will be relevant links will be there available for you. So, yeah, all the support you've been giving is just been absolutely amazing. It's blown us away, and uh, yeah, thank you very much. Perfect. I couldn't say it any better myself. And obviously, we're going to Saturday. Hopefully, three points. Let's hope we get there, get it over the line, and then look on to Tuesday. We obviously will be back to do it all over again. But until then, keep smiling, keep supporting the podcast, and come on, you pies.